I was listening to rap since I could remember, like five years old, I think. Uh, my sister had tapes full of 90s R&B that they recorded when they were on, on vacation on Haiti. They had, had a satellite with like, you know, much Germany and like, I played that tape over and over and over growing up. So it was pretty much like, like what I learned about music pretty much. My first experience with music that I remember very vividly was watching the Super Bowl with Michael Jackson. It was in my memory, like deep in my memory. Then I'd totally forgotten it. And then I realized like, oh shit, that's been in my brain the whole time in the back of it. The beginning of the performance, he comes out like magically, you know? He just pops up on, on top of each corner of the stadium and then just like jumps out of the floor and there's all this smoke. And he just stands there for like two minutes straight. And literally the whole stadium is just going crazy and he's a statue on stage, you know? And I just remember my sister being like, come on, Michael. <laughs> Cause she didn't know that it was like on purpose. Like she thought it was like a technical difficulty or something. It's so funny. Cause when I watched it, it's like the fact that he's standing there is literally the most badass thing I think anyone's ever done on that scale. That's the most boss shit to me, yeah. Me and my brother were watching uh, Boondocks and there was one scene where they were like robbing a bank and then like a uh, raid from a mad villain was playing and we're like, damn, we're like, what is that beat? Like that beat, you know, and that rapper, like it was really soulful and bassy and more, you know, I don't know, it really moved us in, in some way. The only mentor I could get was like my brother, like just like criticizing like how my beat sounded and whatever, you know. We were watching The Roots one time and like there was like the bass player like with the, um, he had like a toothpick or something like that. Right? And he was like killing it on the bass and he was like, you should do like some stuff like that, you know, like just instead of doing like, like, mm, dun, 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 or whatever. Like my brother's like, you should do more like, doo, 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 and, you know, like go, go more crazy, be more funky, like be like James Brown or something, you know, like that really like influenced me how I see bass lines. I was staying in Montreal for um, another couple of days. It was like crazy, it was winter time. There must have been like three feet of snow on the ground. Like it was like a crazy blizzard. Me and Kate linked up um, and got sushi. And that night like we played a whole bunch of stuff for each other and traded like ideas and samples and everything. It's like you bring your ingredients, which are like the the shit that grows in your area of the world or whatever, you know what I mean? Or like the shit that you like or the shit that you get. What, what brought us together is because we were both listening to like Brazilian, like, you know, MPB, like 1970, like Marcos Valle, Verokai, all that stuff. That really brought us together. Just being in the studio with Bad Ben and, you know, Raven Cyber really completely changed how I make beats now. I came out of working with Kay just being like, as an artist, it's like, you're really putting your whole soul out there when you're making something. And especially when you're combining it with somebody else and it's like, you're just blending up all these different ingredients and seeing what happens. And then you just see yourself in a totally different context, a different perspective, you know?